gentlemen on the agenda. Apologies for options. Councillors Lee and the interim town clerk. Item number two, declaration of interests. Item three, members' dispensations. Item number four, public questions. Item number five is a request <coughs> to use Jubilee Park um, for these uh, fitness sessions. We had it on the agenda for last month's meeting and um, we did defer it for further um, um, to look into it further to compare with the um, facilities afforded by a neighbouring <coughs> authority. In this case, Great Ethics Town Council. Hey, Great Ethics Council. And uh, if members would note the proposals in here, um, included in your copies, the certificates, is we have to be put the agreements that cover the area, uh, continue to demonstrate this insurance certification, and provide relevant risk assessments, and only use suitably grassed areas away from the general public use, and that no additional machinery or equipment be brought into the park. <coughs> Ask to agree uh, the proposals as outlined in this report. Thank you, General. Given the, uh, the outline there in, in the proposal in section 4, I'm happy to move the recommendation. Yes, sir. Councillor Mason. I'm just chair. I would just like to ask under the uh, combined liability, uh, it does make reference to um, damage to lease and rented premises, but it makes no mention of land. Are we actually covered on this document for any damage to the land? I'm aware that uh, no equipment is to be brought on, onto the uh, uh, site of Jigal Park, but um, we should have some cover for the land as well in case there was any damage. Can you confirm that that cover is in place? Thank you. Just on that, the, provided the agenda isn't bringing in equipment and an additional use of the park, it's simply a uh, use of the park that it, it, it's put on our insurance uh, because it's essentially meant for the public use of the park in the way that it's designed to be used. Uh, that's why one of the stipulations in there is that it doesn't bring any additional equipment onto the park because that would be against our insurance. Councillor Thompson. Chair, yeah, I've got absolutely nothing against this. Or any concern I would have would be over the protection of the council. So I'm saying that, would the gentleman not need to have a CRB check? He's going to be playing our park where all our children's play equipment is. Would we that be an essential part, you think? Chairman, from my perspective, that wouldn't be a consideration considering it's a public area. Um, and members of the public can already access that public area without saying that very Yeah, I only thought many of the others in the park would have an interest. Jeff, it's just a thought, I'm just. just yeah, it's a consideration, that's all. So, if you need it, I'm happy with that, I'm fine with it. That might be dependent on what age he's instructing or not. Well, I think he's in there, it's true. I can tell. <coughs> I 
think a big part of this is uh, so they're available where they could walk pitches. Hopefully these um, defibrillators will be used. Um, I say that there is a provision in there for maintenance and the upkeep of them. Thank you, Chair. As you said, this is a big and exciting project for us, um, which will see uh, public use of defibrillators put on uh, the external parts of community building to make it possible. It has been completely funded, or will be completely funded by County Council neighbourhood budgets, um, which includes in there a five year DU uh, for maintenance costs, and the Town Council has to pick up that maintenance cost, which I believe is only maybe pound a year. And following that five year period. Uh, as I said, I think this is a worthwhile project and something the town council should be involved in in this way. And so I'll move the recommendation as outlined in section five. Yes, Councillor Madison. Yes, Chair, I do agree it's a worthwhile uh, project, but I would like to make an amendment. Um, <coughs> this list, in fact, um, Sure, spending more time hall, but um, several years ago, uh, ex councillor Madison did uh, propose defibrillators for the town hall, so and which are in place. Um, and we haven't got on here um, Kurt Merrington, or I think it would be a very good idea for the park itself. And I would like to propose that the um, town council themselves um, look to provide the facilities uh, at both of those locations and therefore would give an amendment to ask for that to be done. I appreciate this particular project is a project uh, from members of uh, the Labour group but it is something that I feel should be necessary from the council as well to add to these other locations. I'll second that amendment. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Do you want to come in with that? Defer to the local member if I can be fine. Yeah, you know, Chair, um, okay. I understand that uh, Council of is concerned about Kurt Murrington. Equally, um, a defibrillator was uh, provided and it housed on the uh, external of the British Wall. Okay. You know, that comes with that. Chairman, to, uh, to follow on from that, the issue of the spending of the town hall, there are defibrillators in this building, but this is a provision of an external um, defibrillator which will be accessed 24 7 by the public if need be. So it's a different uh, sort of service to the one we have actually have inside the town hall this current moment in time. I, I think it's, it's an excellent project. I mean, I was under the impression that uh, the deputy on the Temple Town Park was already looking to put one in by his way in my extent, but that's fine. Uh, but I'd just like to know what is the cost? What is the, the overall cost? Very young. Chairman, I'm going to answer that. The, the overall cost for the project is £13,000, so divide that by six, just over two grand, including maintenance per unit. Uh, well, uh, Chair, for you again, I do this, it really is worthwhile. But I do support what Councillor Madison is saying. I think this uh, town perhaps we should consider one in the park. Uh, we have buildings there that's readily accessible by the public and it's, it's, it's a good thought that to put one in the park as well. Councillor Madison. Um, Mr Chair, I'd just like to clarify on something that Councillor uh, Council Gellar said and, and that is accessible by members of the public. It should be pointed out that these members of the public should be trained first respond also. Chairman, to come back on that council I the uh, website on the Chairman, Council Medicine is entirely wrong on it. It's, um, it's outlined there in the early parts of Section 3 of the report that these are AEDs, um, which are automatic machines, and they actually guide the user through the use <coughs> of the machine as, as it's getting used. They're designed to be foolproof for any member of the public to use. That is exactly the, the, the use of these equipment. So, Council Madison is completely wrong with what you said. The fact is, there's no big training needed. It's a step by step guide on the actual yeah. evidence itself. Yeah. Members of the public can get electric shocks if they want to handle this. Chairman, again, we're coming, we're coming on that. These machines are designed. They will not provide an electric shock to somebody who does not need it. These very sophisticated, automated machines are out. I would have assumed that was, that was evident in the report. Um, Council Madison again is entirely wrong. I have read the website on defibrillators, Chair. Councillor Smith. 
Kevin, I think it's a really good idea. And I'd just like to remind the, the council that uh, it's not the first time that we've provided the vision of the time. I did that when I was there. But it wasn't mine. It was the people of this town and other people, members of the public, who paid me one side. I never took any personal credit. It was the people who bought those defibrillators, and that was in 1997, uh, 1998. And it wasn't the Labour group. <laughs> we had a proposal. And we only did.